Howard Jacobson is one of the few modern writers who are truly funny. But under the outrageous texture of his novels can be heard a sensitive concern for what it means to be in a cultural minority. He started out that way, and look how far he has come. But how far has multicultural Britain come? Howard, here we are in Britain, and we're both representatives of ethnic minorities. And, uh, <laughs> we're Me part more of, than you. We're, we're, we're part of the rich tapestry of British society. How do you think multi-ethnic, multicultural Britain is going? I keep finding myself saying that there's, there's no such thing as multiculturalism, and I seem to be allowed to get away with saying that. Nobody, I don't you can get, certainly say it here. I don't get, I don't get hate I now. agree with you in the sense I don't think multiculturalism is an ideology, or it shouldn't be. It's a nice emphasis, but as an ideology, it's got all kinds of drawbacks. Well, one of the drawbacks is there is, there, there is an assumption that, you can, that all sorts of things can meet when there's nothing for them to meet around. Yeah. That, I mean, I think that I love talking about myself and as, as coming in from the margins. But if you have a margin, you've got to have a centre. I'm perfectly happy with the idea that there is a... I would be uncomfortable to talk about it as a host, yeah. white, Anglo-Saxon, yeah. Protestant, Catholic yeah. culture. But there is, a, there, is, there is something that I feel I am, to a degree, excluded from and indeed want to be excluded from. And that is, and that is a more central thing than I am, and I, don't, and I don't think you can have a culture unless it feels it has, a, it has a middle and aspires to a middle, and those of us on the outside aspire towards, aspire towards a middle, even if we may disagree with the middle and want to change the middle. The trouble with a lot of accounts of multiculturalism you hear is it's just it's a, it's a mishmash. Everything has, everything has an equal right and an equal vote, and I don't get that. It has been said that that central white Anglo-Saxon culture, the, the traditional heritage, cent central part of the population, is itself becoming underprivileged. I, I, somebody said in a paper the other day uh, that Stephen Lawrence, the young black boy who was murdered by the white boys, he spoke English better than his murderers huh. and had a better right to be here. Now that second point I thought was spot on. Do we know who murdered him yet? No, I don't suppose we do. Maybe I've put us both in jail. There is, of course, I mean, the, 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 you get very quickly onto the, onto the question of class, which is something else you're not supposed to talk about anymore. And I really miss talking about class in the way I was brought up to talk about class, um, with, with language like common. Yeah. There were common people. I can't say common, but I bet you've not heard the word common. No, you're, you, you're not allowed to say that anymore. But there is such a thing as a common, a common mind, not just of the common people, as was once as they were once described in, or as someone was once described in history books. But the idea that there is some kind of non-aspirational, as the Americans would say, dedicated to being low or... It's been I miss the right to be able to make those judgments about the way some people, some people live their lives. I see commonness all around me, and I'm increasingly disgusted and scared by what I see. I've been here 40 years now, and I've seen the manners of the common people deteriorate. And I've seen it usefully said that you, there are now only two classes left in Britain. There are those who take their litter home and those who don't. And I think, that, I, I think there's some truth to it. <laughs> I, saw somebody, I saw somebody, and I'm not going to say uh, what age or what colour or what sex, dropping litter in the street the other day and it all came rushing back, all that. Yeah. My, my grandma and my mother whispering and pointing to other people and saying, they're common, they're common people over there. And I wanted to do so. I thought I ought to, I ought to, I ought to be... I ought, to have the, I ought to be a mensch and have the nerve to stop that person and say, pick that up, but you don't do that because you're, you, you're actually frightened you'll get beaten up. This is what can we say? We can't talk about race, and we ought to be able to talk about culture, but we can't talk about culture. And I'd like to talk about cultures. For example, there's such a thing as a Jewish cultural difference. They're they, which means you, are a very aspirational, striving, get-ahead people compared to, say, some other cultures. Is, is it still so? Was it ever so? I think, I think it was true. I think it was true. I think it still is true. Um, uh, we're very frightened to acknowledge that now, and we're, very fr we're all frightened to acknowledge difference. I think difference is a problem, isn't it? If we acknowledge difference, there's an assumption that we are describing a superiority. Sometimes we are describing a superiority, but we can't acknowledge it. Or in a... Or, and, then we, and then we get into the elitist problem. Who is, one, who is one group to look down upon another group? Who is one, what is one class to look down upon another class? So we all, we, af we affect a, I, can't, I don't know what the word is really, we affect, 
What's the word well, for when everything is the same? Multiculturalism as an ideology has the drawback, I think, that it's, we have to behave as if all cultural groups were, the, were, 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 were equal, and we have to Sorry. behave as if we approve of their customs equally. And the fact is we don't, and we can't. Uh, if a certain cultural group treats its women badly, we deplore it. And, uh, and if we're not allowed to say so, then we're censoring ourselves, or being censored. But there is, there is a peculiar, I don't know whether it's as strong as a hypocrisy, but there's an awkwardness around, isn't there? Because we feel we cannot say that about another group. We feel to, to, to describe the way another, and what, what other groups do with their genitals, for example, is to interfere in the cultural heritage and self, whatever it is, self-respect, um, of that group, but and who are we to say it? And yet we do. We, but we will nonetheless do it about ourselves. If we think that our own, if we think our own culture treats women, we all we all know that our culture treats women badly. We have heard nothing else for the last forty years, but that our culture, and we get into this mess where we can only describe our, we can only describe the faults of our culture, and those faults become virtues in another culture. We are. I mean, we keep being told that we have a trouble with otherness. And that we don't, you know, we're, we're bad. We're, we're bad with others. I actually think we're going through a period of immense sentimentality about others, and that we like others much more than we like ourselves. I think the question came to a head uh, over uh, sexual, the treatment, sexual treatment, or the, the treatment of women, say in Somalia, when some of the feminists uh, said that women in Somalia at least knew they were they were women because they were having clitoridectomy imposed on them. And this showed that they, they were regarded as an, authentically as a separate sex. And the authenticity, <laughs> God, God, God help us if that kind of authenticity happened to people we know. <laughs> and, well, we heard, um, and we had versions of this, didn't we, after September the 11th, when there was a lot of talk around from, coming from, from Muslim communities or from people who, who believe that they are au fait with Muslim communities, Muslim of fire, Islam of Islamophiles. Um, when we when we were told that the reason women we, the reason women dress so that there's not a part of them that's visible, that, I mean that's that's a, that's a sign of the immense respect in well, which they're held in that community, and that their men folk do not wish them to. Well, it it may it them. may very well be so, but what we know is not so is that if they're physically injured, then something is going wrong, something we, that we don't accept in our law. We also know that if that if respect has to go around covered up with that kind of fear, there's something wrong with the nature of that respect. But How once again, we feel, who are we to, who are we to, we can't say that. Well, do you think that uh, Islamic people watching now, and even Islamic women, would automatically assume from the way you talk that you're anti-Islam because you're Jewish? Possibly. Mm. And it's possible that I am. Um, and I sort of accept that they are, that it's in the nature of our long history and struggle with each other, um, that they are. Um, and, and it might it might be a bit of a help if we all acknowledge that about one another because we're going through a period now, aren't we, in which we go on. In which I hear every day to be to be critical of Israel is not, of course, to be critical of Jews. That's the great cliche. And well, of course, not to be critical. You have to be. Able. I've suddenly started to think maybe to be critical of Israel is to be critical of Jews. I mean, it depends who's being critical of Israel. Um, but I can think of some some quarters, some actual national quarters, where criticism of Israel, it seems to me, is automatically criticism of Jews. How can it be otherwise if the country that's being critical of Israel watches the dramatizations of the Protocols of Zion on television every night and reads Nazi literature? Which is actually true in some of the uh, Arab countries, and especially the most liberal one, or theoretically the most liberal one, which is Egypt. Uh, there are Egypt... Egyptian governmental publications, which, which publish anti-Semitic articles, uh, articles that would be approved of by, say, the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem at the time when he was yes. in Berlin urging yes. Hitler to get on with yes. it. Yes, That's, they, have, they, have, they, have, um, a they have in their minds a caricature of the Jew, which is no different from the caricature of the Jew that, that, that's, that we saw in, in, in Germany 70 or 80 years ago. And maybe we should just sort of if we can amicably face this about one, that it's been such a long battle with one another with that we don't really like one another very much. We have to sort that out, but with the fact is we don't like one another very much. We, it's, Jews would willingly say that they've had a better history of treatment under Islam than they have under Christianity. But the, but the treatment was always this reasonable treatment. It wasn't always that great. But it was mainly predicated upon Jews being an inferior people who could be called in and got rid of when necessary. What seems to, what seems to be 
what seems to be one of the problems with Israel is that there's been the, 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 a form of Jewish life has asserted itself in a way that's, that, that, that Islamic people cannot, absolutely cannot bear. Um, it's, it's, almost as if the Jewish, it's almost as if the Jewish people are like, a, it's like a, an, an organ that, will, that the body rejects. The Islamic world cannot bear to have a Jewish state in the middle of it. I don't blame it. I understand could why, you, but it should face it. Could you bear it if you were there, if you were in Israel and you were faced with, one of the first things you'd be faced with is Eretz Israel, extremist Zionism that wants to occupy all of the Holy Land, that wants to stay at war forever, that is actually... A, uh, actually distorts Israeli politics. What would you do about Where would you stand as a, as, as a liberal Israeli? Well, I hate them. I hate them, and I've met them. Um, and three quarters of them are born in New York, and they've been sent out doing, there because these are the, the families... These that, are the extremists, the yes, haven't, yes. the extremists, um, who, will, who point to you know, the Bible and go, you see here with tears in their eyes, you see what it says here, or they show you a map of the Holy Land. All over here is where we were, God said we were meant to... Be. You can have no patience with them. And the cruel thing, is, we, is the cruel thing is that this is a new phenomenon that had that was never never part of what was in the grand design of the, of our early Zion. They wanted to be rid of that kind of Jewish fanaticism. They wanted to say many of them state. wanted to be rid of almost wanted to be rid of Jews. I mean, you can find there's, there's something almost anti-Jewish in the very. There were some statements that people like Weizmann made about Jewish life as we now have have come to sentimentalise it again. The Polish ghetto version or the Russian, you know, the hysterical somersault dancing. Um, Hasidic version of Jews, they, 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 those Zionists could not bear. We wanted a secular people, we wanted Jews freed from the, the, the excesses of their superstitious lives, brought upon them because of the way they were forced to live in Russia and the rest of it, and we were meant to live in great peace and harmony with our civilised Arab brothers. The, what, the, uh, Ara the Arab opinion as it is now was not part of the plot, but neither was much Jewish life as it is now part of the plot. Let's talk about Arab opinion. Suppose instead of being a liberal Israeli, I made you a liberal Arab. Would you be advocating a, an acceptance of the state of Israel, uh, uh, accept, uh, the, the only possibility being a parallel Palestinian state, rather more or less the position that Edward Said has taken? It worries me that I don't hear as many liberal Arab voices as I would like to hear. It's an unfair thing to say because I don't go out of my way to find them. I'm bound to say that Edward Said popped into my mind because nobody else did. Yes. It seems to me Edward Said's problem, he hasn't got a secular intelligentsia backing him up. It just isn't there. We, and the, the Arab nations on the whole are woefully uninformed about the history of the Middle East. That's plain. And, and they're, living, they're living with a hope that they can't have. And it's, uh, it's distorted politics in the Middle East in a big way for a long time. There seems to be victim culture. Things are done to them. Nothing has been done by them. Uh, of, course, of course, a modern Arab inherits um, a situation which is partly of his own making. I don't know whether things could have been, had things been done differently on either side, things could have been different now. But um, there was certainly, it's certainly the case that, that Jewish extremism, when it's not simply... Um, the result of American families sending their nutty kids over to Israel is a con is a consequence of of uh, Israeli anxiety. The thing that you ne the thing that you never seem to hear from Arab commentators is is, is any understanding of uh, Israeli fear, and indeed world Jewish fear about Israel. Um, they don't they they seem to think that the, 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 the that Israel. Th because it sometimes acts as a bully, that it feels like a bully. It feels terrified, and all Jews still feel frightened. I don't know a Jew that still doesn't, meet, that doesn't feel frightened. And even the Jews who are um, much, more, m much more anxious about, about, about how Israel is comporting itself at the moment, even they are frightened for Israel. Because if Israel goes, and we all think at any time Israel could go, the Arabs might not think Israel can go unless they can blow the whole thing out of the way. But we feel Israel could go. And we feel that if, and we, I speak for all Jews, but we, and we feel that if Israel goes, we lose a very, an, an, an essential component of our security, even if we never ever want to go there. Well, the fact is we would lose the world because uh, when Yasser Arafat was still at the stage when he was asking for the dissolution of the state of Israel, along with Vanessa Redgrave, uh, <laughs> what the, became of her? The, the, the immediate consequence would have been it would have been a second, a second Holocaust, yeah. and rather than do that, Israel would have brought the war to an end, yes. which was within its capacity yes. to do, and still yes. is. Yes. And I wouldn't blame them. 
Um, so the, uh, this, the existence of the state of Israel is a sine qua non. It's, it, it is a given. And I think probably recent history in the Middle East is the gradual acceptance by the Palestinian cause of that. It's only quite recently that, that Yasser Arafat has contemplated the existence of a, an Israeli state as a permanent feature. If he, if he, if if he, he does. genuinely does. If he genuinely well, does. I think Abba Eban, who was, I think, foreign minister of Israel, once said that uh, Yasser Arafat is the kind of man who never misses the opportunity to miss an opportunity. <laughs> and uh, that probably happened after Oslo and happened again the year before last. And maybe he's just the wrong man. What would you do if you were him? That's an interesting question. Because maybe he can't make peace because he's just simply got too much pressure from his own extremists who get killed. I don't see how he can make peace. We could, I mean, I keep, expe I keep expecting him to be removed, if not by Israel, by his own. But there does seem to be some quality, some extraordinary quality of survival in him. Yeah. Um, Allah given survival? Is he a, is he a holy man? Well, is he as corrupt as some people say? I don't know if he's... He's if, certainly if under he's far greater threat from his own extremists now than he ever has been from any Jewish agency. And most, and most cautious... Israelis, as indeed most cautious Jews, do not share that belief that the sooner we get rid of him, the better. I mean, there was a little movement about that a month ago, wasn't there? Six weeks ago, yeah. when the word was that Bush had finished. Not only had Bush finished with Arafat, but much more important, Tony Blair had finished with Arafat. How <laughs> oh, the end. But, but if, he survived, <laughs> if he survived Tony Blair's impatience, I think he can survive anything. What do you think of Tony Blair's new role as world leader? My theory is that uh, since he's the man who can put Bush's thoughts into words, he's going to be indispensable on an international level for years to come. <laughs> <laughs> as a translator into language that we all recognise. Yeah. The problem is going to be, as, and not for the first time in British history, I would have thought that we're going to have somebody who is more respected abroad than he is at home. He is in great danger now of becoming not only a figure of fun, but a, but a mistrusted well, figure. Um, I th or it might be that we just decide he looks more, he, he looks more ignoble at home than he does away, and let's have him away a lot. But he's in a permanent honeymoon because he has no real opposition. But uh, I thought that the second term is bringing out the reality that was there in the first. Labour has, that probably has no real answer to the public services question. They have the Thatcherite answer. He was, a, he was a child of Thatcher. I remember saying that very early on, that we, we, have, the new f we have a new phenomenon in the, long before he was Prime Minister, and that we have, we, have a, we have a Labour Party which is much more enamoured. As she was on her way out, you felt that Labour Party saw a way of continuing this when the Conservatives were sick to death of her. Yeah. And that's what I think we now we actually have a continuation of Thatcherite, but of course because, it's, because it can't go the whole hog, it's, we're, not getting any, we're not getting much on either side. Are we? Britain's world role might be even smaller than we think. Its world role might be last into Europe. Do you think it will ever go? I suspect it will never go. I, I, suspect, that we will, I suspect we will never really go in. I'm, I'm Stay here away go, from it. I was born under the old empire and raised under the, the Commonwealth as it then was. And I came here because it was, for me, the centre of language and history. And for my generation, it still is. Whether it will be in the future is a big question. I'm not so sure that the young people have much of a sense of, of British heritage or, or care much about it. Maybe, may, maybe, maybe, something, maybe something adheres in the culture whether the kids don't know, don't read the books and don't have much respect for the language and don't even have any, have any sense of history and don't know who the Prime Minister before Tony Blair, maybe some, I don't know, some pig-headedness or some There's quality of indomitableness or something or other, or is this just sentimental? Maybe some, something in the nature, something eradical, ineradicable in the nature of the people in, 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 adheres however uncultured we become. I think it was said at the time of the, of the battle in the Falkland Islands that, uh, that the young men who were all lined up to be buried in plastic bags, our, our brave young men, were the actual yobbos that we've been scared of <laughs> in previous years, that, that when the moment, the moment came they did quite well. I think that probably is sentimentality, but there's, there's, there's something, your theory, that you're really saying there's something in the water. And it, it, it's quite yeah. possibly true. Cometh the hour, cometh the hour. But we've always known that. You can't. I mean, isn't that what? Isn't that why we have streets full of, of young men, of, uh, of whom we walk in, whom we walk in terror. We yes. walk in, t and it's only because they're not doing what they should be doing, which is fighting for us, uh, uh, conquering who, places for. What us. makes you cross the street? I personally, at my age of sixty-two, cross the street when I see a group of any three young black men and any two young white men. I'm more scared now of the whites 
Depends about. on their haircuts. And, 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 I, and I'm, I'm not scared of Asians, but I suppose in certain parts of the country I could be. I'm scared of almost everything. It's, a, it's, a, it's probably a factor of age. But I'm scared of Asians now. This is a very interesting thing, because I used new, to not it? be scared. This is new. I yes. always used to think Asians and me were the same. Yeah. We could talk to one another. Yeah. Um, the market stall that my father used to run w w was run after his death by an Asian. The streets where we used to live when we moved up to the next suburb were occupied by A. We seemed to be the same sorts of people. We seemed to have been used by other countries in the same way. We seemed to have been employed as their, as their clerks. And, and then sometimes at, our, at the grandest level as their bankers. And we, seem, and, we see, and we were very keen in sending our children to university and we did, we did better at school. And I thought we were absolutely the same, the same people. I am sort of, this is, considering what I've also been saying about the Jews and Islam, this shows how uneducated I am. I just thought um, boys from Pakistan and, uh, yes, boys from Pakistan and me were cl and agreed about everything. And it's a bit of a shock to know that we don't. I still don't think I'm frightened of the way they look because they don't. I'm just frightened of what they believe. Yeah. And I don't know what is the more frightening. Well, it's, there's a possibility that, that the young men who uh, are raised in Britain but want to fight for Al-Qaeda are right. That the, 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 the culture that we have is simply too bland, uninteresting and corrupt to, to, to secure anyone's loyalty. There's something pure and attractive about being a fanatic. And you, you probably get three square meals a day and, a, and an early entry into paradise. There are other things you might do, though, when you find your culture bland, besides wanting to blow it <laughs> to smithereens. But that also does bring us... I mean, that returns us to the multicultural thing. Because yeah. nothing... Not, I mean, nothing... I would have thought nothing has blown up the multicultural argument than what we have heard um, Pakistani kids in the north of England and in the Midlands yeah. saying. Because they have not been persuaded of it at all. What they've been persuaded of is that we have no culture ourselves to offer. And if they, if they thereby feel that they, have a, that they have a stronger culture than ours, more worth fighting for, something more tangible, something in which they can invest their beliefs and indeed their energies, actually that, I, it's hard to blame them given that we haven't offered them anything at all except the idea that we are welcoming. Except in actuality we're not that welcome. It's something that the government might have to concern itself with and, and produce a few politicians to do. I, I, my own conclusion about Tony Blair, as I, as I look at what seems to me his infinite blandness, is that the, the hour has produced the man and produced the type. There's nothing much for a politician to do except administer. Whereas when you get to the Middle East, and you can call that real politics if you like, as opposed to what we've got, everything depends on the people. The, uh, we're asking an awful lot for the right people to be in place in every faction in the Middle East. You want a be better Yasser Arafat, you don't want Ariel Sharon, you want a, a classic liberal uh, Israeli leader at the same time as you get a, uh, a leader of Egypt who's ready to make an accommodation. Just think of the, of what, of the coincidence that when Sadat was ready to make peace, then the man leading Israel happened to be Menachem Begin. Yeah. You've got to have the right people in the right spot. And it's, it's, it's asking an awful lot. It's probably not going to happen. And it gets harder and harder the, the, lo the, the longer conflict goes on because what conflict creates is generals. Yeah. Um, That's why Sharon is there. It's because exactly. the country's scared. Isn't yes. it? You, you want Abs your strong man. Yeah. Absolutely. And if, if it were not a Sharon, I'm sure there are hundreds more we could find. And I'm sure that there are, you know, the, 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 the same would be said on the other side. You, conflicts, produ conflicts produce men of war, and, and, the, and the hero then becomes not a thinking man, but a successful man of war. And then we expect that man of war suddenly to become... Well, miracles, miracles can happen. It's not going to happen with this one. I don't think. The young people, from our viewpoint, know very little. We're probably right. The schools teach less. And you've been an educator. What's to be done? Well, we despair a lot, and we um, and we look at our we, we contemplate our, our old age, and our every third thought is the grave. Uh, that's one thing that's to be done. That's by us. What do we do? What's in the to schools? be done by them? <laughs> what's to be done in the schools? How how do you restore the idea, if it's worth restoring, of teaching the grammar of the English language, for example? Well, people people are saying that that in television things are cyclical and that after, after a bad period, we will get a good period. And that somehow or other, I suppose, I suppose this is built on an assumption that societies have the capacity to heal themselves, large, small, as well as large, that, we, that, we, that somehow or other it knows what's wrong, it will find out what's wrong within itself and will heal itself. There's and I hope that teachers will somehow or other 
good teachers will appear. And it's, hard, it's hard to see where they will, where they will come from. But it can't from Australia, all. probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's quite... But I've long felt that, that, you know, that Australia and New Zealand, mm. and, and I don't know about Canada, but certainly at, at, of the three, Aust Australia is the one I know. It was the most... I mean, I'm, I, I'm not schmoozing you. It was the most cultured place I'd ever been to. Mm. To this day, if I were doing Who Wants to Be a Millionaire and I, and I could choose 100 friends to ring, they would all be Australian. Who else will know more about you know where where the where the jottos are? An Australian will know that. Who will know who 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 is the most expert on any subject? We all know that they've had to compensate, but it's a country of lovers of books. What the little I know about good music, I I, I learnt in Australia. I had no good music in in Cambridge. Someone played me Janacek once <laughs> in college, and I thought that was a bit difficult. But I'd go to Australia, and we would sit around, and the rowdiest people with whom I'd spent a day on the beach or a day at cricket in the evening would sit around, and somebody would say, OK, now let's listen to Geyser Ander playing Mozart, and let's compare it to this one playing Mozart. And it was such a serious place, I thought. I found culture there. It sounds as if you miss it as much as I do. I miss it. Yes, I miss it terribly. <laughs> well, just to, just to round it out, and possibly on a low note, if if communities, groups, cultures, whatever you call them, all in the one country, if they want different things, then reconciliation and harmony might be impossible. You just might have to live with the tension. Thousands and thousands of people put away all the time. Afraid so. Yeah. Is it not going to reach the stage where there's more of them? Might it not be easy to put us away? Put a few of us away. Put a few of us away in really, really comfortable detention centres and let them roam the streets. Give so them, here, have, nah, have the country. You want the country? Have, rob one another, beat one another. Some of our viewers Four. have probably wanted to lock us up anyway, but we'll get back to that subject. For now, that's enough. Thank you very much, Howard Jacobson. <laughs>